Susan with LifeScape.com and I'm in Little Falls, New Jersey with 2009 U.S. National Champion Jeremy Abbott. Jeremy hosted a skating seminar at the Floyd Hall Ice Arena with a group of very lucky young skaters. Later that evening, he performed at a benefit for the Skate for Knowledge Scholarship Fund. In December, you won the Grand Prix Final. A month later, you won the U.S. National Championship. How has your life changed with these victories, or has it? Um, I don't think that my life has changed. Uh, I think that I've changed a little bit. Um, I've put a little more expectation and pressure on myself to compete better <laughs> and to be a better skater. I was really thrilled with the success that I had this season and it really, it gave me a lot of confidence but then at the same time um, I really felt like I had to produce those performances every time I skated and so it was a little bit of a burden at the same time but uh, I really learned a lot from both of those experiences and the world championships that just occurred um, and I'm really excited to start over again next season and produce something new and really uh, challenge myself to, to be better. Speaking of Worlds, where you came in 11th overall, <laughs> talk a little about that experience. Did you feel pressure and added stress coming in as the U.S. champion? Um, I didn't feel any pressure coming in as the champion. I really, f um, I was trying to reproduce the skates that I had had at the final and at nationals and in China. Instead of um, training for Worlds. I was training to try to reproduce the programs that I had already done um, and that ended up being a huge mistake because it made me more nervous trying to reproduce something instead of trying to produce something completely new and different from what I had already done and so I put too much pressure on myself in that sense and I was actually very very disappointed with um, the way that my World Championships went. Uh, you know like I didn't skate poorly it just wasn't it wasn't good and um, it was kind of a letdown after such a great season, but I still have the World Team Trophy in Tokyo, and I'll be putting out the quad, and I'm just really excited to take that step and to prove that I'm a lot better than what I did at Worlds. Now, your mom, Allison, I was viewing her photographs from Los Angeles during Worlds, and she was updating all of us on Facebook, your fan site club, Pigs Can Fly. Tell me how your family has contributed to your success. I can't even begin to describe how my family has contributed to my success. They're, they're the reason that I'm skating. They're the reason that I'm, I've been able to um, really like, go for my dreams. I mean, <clears throat> it's such an amazing thing to see your dreams start to come um, to fruition. And I mean, none of this would be, would be possible without my family. They're so supportive and they've sacrificed so much. And there's really nothing that I could say or do that could thank them enough for everything they've done for me. They've been amazing. You're going back to South Korea later this month to skate in a show called Festa on Ice with Yuna Kim, Johnny Weir and others. You're a skating <laughs> rock star in Korea, let's be honest. Do you have a theory? What's the connection between Jeremy Abbott and Korea? Why have they embraced you to such an unbelievable level? I mean, I have no idea, but I'm so, I'm so grateful. They. They've been so supportive and they've been amazing fans and it's just, it's amazing to see their devotion to skating and to um, the athletes that they enjoy and I'm just so grateful to be one of them and I've really gotten some great support from them and I'm so happy that whatever <laughs> I've done with my skating has really struck a chord and that they've really embraced me and I'm so thankful to be able to go back and show them how much I appreciate everything. What's the off season like for you? When do you begin thinking about programs for next season? And are you going to take a, a vacation, a real vacation? Yeah, actually after um, Festa on Ice in Korea, I'm going away for a week, um, away from skating, away from home, and just have a week of rest and not worry about anything. Um, I've actually already begun to think about programs, uh, maybe a bit too soon, but um, you know, it's the Olympic season and I really want to make sure that I have the best programs that I possibly can and just be the best prepared that I can because I really would love to have that Olympic title and I really want to work hard for it and I want to, um, I just, I want to have the best everything that I possibly can. <laughs> now related to that, what are your thoughts on Vancouver? Is the Olympics constantly in the back of your mind while you're training from this point on or, or not? Oh, it's really funny. Um, I went through this whole season just focused on kind of one thing at a time and after the Grand Prix Final I started to really think about the Olympics and think about like the reality of it and it's it's exciting and a little scary at the same time because it's such a big thing and it's like something that everyone focuses on and puts so much weight on. Um, but 
you know, at the, at the same time, it's just another competition. It's like Worlds or it's like the Grand Prix or it's like Nationals. Um, it's all the same skaters that I would come in contact with at Worlds or the Grand Prix. And um, I mean, the only thing that's different is that more people are paying attention. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it has been in the back of my mind and I really want to make sure that I'm as well prepared mentally and physically and that I can be. Now with the success of all the U.S. men, yourself, Evan Lysacek, Brandon Mraz, uh, Ryan Bradley, do you think that the U.S. men are really carrying the mantle of American figure skating now? Um, I think the American men are certainly very high on, on the world stage. Um, I mean, I think that we could certainly have two medals at the Olympics next season. Evan just won Worlds, and I had won the Grand Prix Final. And, I mean, Johnny was third at Worlds last year and at the Grand Prix Final this year. And I think, and Brandon, like, throughout the quad at Nationals and was phenomenal. I think that any number of us could be on that team, and certainly we could have, um, n like, numerous medalists, not just participants. <laughs> Now, I asked uh, the viewers and readers of LifeSkate.com to submit a question, ask Jeremy a question is what I called it, and I have four, so I'm just going to, uh, these are from your fans okay. and viewers. How do you get focused right before a performance or competition? Um, I just, I like to visualize um, my program and the performance that I want to do, and I talk to my coaches, and if I have any nerves or anything that's bothering me, I make sure to tell them and just get it out. Um, but I'm still trying to find that right combination of everything to do to stay as focused as I can. Um, it's, it's not something that comes easily to me and it's something that I certainly have to work on and that I have to continue to work on. So it's just, it's just trying to find what works for me personally. Tell us about Bobby and why he is in many photographs. What is the backstory? At 2007 Nationals, my sister and I were walking around Spokane and we found these puppets in a toy shop and we thought they were so hilarious. Um, and we just had like, we were just messing around with them. And my sister ended up buying Bobby and I guess the rest is history. He just kind of became a little mascot and my family thinks it's hilarious and they just take it everywhere and take pictures with it. It's kind of like the Travelocity gnome, the roaming gnome, except it's a puppet. <laughs> Who are your skating idols, past and present? Ooh. Um, I could l name off a whole list of people. Um, I don't have any one in particular that I've looked up to. I think John Curry and Robin Cousins and Janet Lynn are phenomenal, and Kurt Browning and Paul Wiley, of course, and Michelle Kwan. I love Michelle Kwan. Um, and Yuna, I think Yuna's phenomenal. She was exquisite at Worlds this year, and she absolutely deserved that title. I tend to admire people who are very artistic and are very in tune with their craft, and it's not just like they're competing to get the points and to get the elements done, but there's something more to it, there's something beautiful about it, and I think that's what I'm more drawn to. What will you do after your competitive skating career has ended, hopefully in many, many years down the road? <laughs> uh, I have no idea. I would love to tour, um, but obviously right now there's not much of an option for that. Um, but I think I'd like to choreograph after I'm done competing. Can you talk a little about the skating clinic that you just held and what you were hoping to instill in the young girls that you were teaching? Um, well, they asked me to do the skating clinic here um, as part of the show that they're doing tonight. Um, and I just wanted them to have fun and try to teach them a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm not a coach, so I just wanted to um, instill some of my knowledge into them and hopefully whatever I said helped. But I just, more importantly, I just hope that they had fun and they really enjoyed themselves. Because, um, I mean, it's not worth doing unless it's fun. And what is the benefit performance that you'll be participating in tonight with Johnny Weir? What are you going to be skating to? Um, I'm going to be skating to a new show program that Tom Dixon choreographed. Uh, it's called Gotta Get Through This by Daniel Bedingfield. And also Treat, which was my short program from last season. For LifeSkate.com, this is Susan. And remember, skating is for life. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye.